Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you so much for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 168 of our trek and yesterday we explored verses 7 through 14 of Proverbs chapter 5. We will remain in camp for one more day as we finish up the fifth chapter of Proverbs before heading back out on our trails tomorrow. If you miss any of the days of our Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com and listen to them or read the Daily Journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at home, too, in Charlotte, North Carolina. This past week has been a productive week for us, and we accomplished a significant amount of work. I have been struggling somewhat with either severe allergies or a cold, which has probably been evident in the quality of my voice on our Daily Treks this week. I trust that this has not been too distracting and that the lessons we are learning are still effective. This episode is scheduled to be released on Sunday of this week. Paula and I do plan to take our grandson Kip with us on Saturday to Mary Jo's, which is a fabric outlet in Gastonia, North Carolina. Granny wants Kip to help her to select materials that she'll use for his planned quilt that she will be making for him in the near future. I also enjoy spending this time with Paula and helping her decide on material selection for her ongoing quilt projects. She is very talented in both quilting and cross-stitch, among many other things. For today, though, we want to spend one more day around our campfire as we explore the remaining verses of Proverbs chapter 5. Just like a campfire that's before us can be extremely enjoyable when it is kept within the confines of its designated parameters, so the physical relationship between a husband and wife will bring much joy and pleasure when it is kept within the boundaries set out by God in His Word. The Bible is so full of practical wisdom for life, and especially the book of Proverbs. This includes what makes a proper and fulfilling physical relationship within a marriage. I realize that not everyone has been as fortunate within a marriage relationship as Paula and I have been over the last 36 years, but it's never too late to make a new beginning. Let's look at what Solomon recommends to his sons when it comes to a proper physical relationship between a husband and wife. For today's trek, we will explore verses 15 through 23 of the fifth chapter of Proverbs. I trust that some of the candid language that used in this passage will be taken in light that is as written and not tainted by any secular views. There is nothing more pure and holy than the appropriate physical relationship between a husband and wife within the boundary of marriage. So let's start with the verses 15 through 17. Drink water from your own well. Share your love with only your wife. Why spill the water of your springs in the streets, having sex with just anyone? You should reserve it for yourselves. Never share it with strangers. In these three verses, Solomon uses the analogy of the physical relationship in marriage and compares it to water. In dry countries, which the setting of the book of Proverbs was written in, water is so valuable. Clean water is even more precious. You should not waste water. It should not flow into the streets. It should not be poured out into the town. Your family and your animals should drink it. You should water your crops. You should use it very wisely. Think about your own life in the same way. You should use your strength wisely. If you follow your base physical and emotional desires, you will waste your energy on something that is not yours to have. You should have sex only with your husband or your wife and not with anyone else. Our lives belong to God. God has shown us how that we should live. Out of our love for God, we should obey His instructions. Our lives are always enriched when we do so. The physical relationship in this passage is compared to your own wells which belong only to you. So husband and wife always belong together. Let's move on to verses 18 through 20. Let your wife be the fountain of blessing to you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you always. Let you always be captivated by her love. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? Why fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? We see here in this passage that marriage is God's gift. A husband and wife should give themselves only to each other. They should enjoy marriage in all aspects, and that includes the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. They should love each other. They should be attracted to each other. That makes up a good marriage. Let's move on to verse 21. For the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path that he takes. Perhaps, like King David, we do some wrong things in secret. This can be found in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, and we talked about it in yesterday's trek. A woman might tempt a man or the other way around. They might think that nobody knows, but they are wrong because God knows. He sees our secret actions. He knows everything that we do in private. Like David, if we have done wrong things, we should turn to God. David's prayer in Psalms 51 will help us to understand why we must ask God to forgive us. Now on to verses 22 and 23. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are the ropes that catch and hold him. He will die for his lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his own great foolishness. A person who practices evil is foolish and not wise. He thinks that he is free, but his evil behavior will make him into a slave. He will be a slave to his behavior. 
He may be able to hide his actions from other people, but he cannot hide it from God. In Numbers 32, 23, Moses wrote to the children of Israel, But if you fail to keep your word, then you will have sinned against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. In this passage, this man's evil behavior will destroy him. This man should invite God into his life. This man needs to ask God to forgive him, and God will save this evil man, but only if this man trusts God. As we reflected around the campfire today, we use the analogy of the best campfire as one that is contained within its preset parameters. In the same way, the physical relationship between a husband and wife must be kept within God's guidelines for a proper marriage. I realize that many of you may have made choices in your past that are warned about in Proverbs 5, and there is nothing that you can do about your past. You need to leave it there. But you can start today and make a brand new future, one that is in line with God's precepts. The life lessons that we learn each day are so valuable to everyone that we meet. So encourage your family and friends to join us each day, and then come along with us for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And tomorrow we will head back out on our trail and search for hidden gems and treasures that are found in making wise choices. These choices made each day will allow us to create the living legacy that we desire. That will finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom on wisdom-trek.com or subscribe at iTunes, Google Play, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, or YouTube so that the episodes will be downloaded to you automatically each day. And please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, But most importantly, I consider you my friend as I serve you through this Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.